Hey everybody, I'm Phil from The Woodsmith Shop. In season four of the series, we built these trestle style sawhorses. They come in two different sizes, and I think every shop needs at least one set. On the following video, you'll see just how easy it is to make them. They use rock solid mortise and tenon joinery and go together with common construction grade lumber that doesn't cost a lot of money and is really easy to work with. You can find plans for these sawhorses at woodsmithplans.com. Hope you enjoy it. The basis for these trestle style sawhorses have three features that I need to create. The first is a three sided notch that will receive the post. Second are the feet at the bottom of the base. And finally, I'll need to cut the final curved shape of the base. But I don't want to start by cutting that curved shape first. That's because the curved shape makes it really hard for the piece to stay stable against the miter gauge fence when I cut the notch. The trick is to start out with a rectangular blank. I've got one here with the notch all laid out. You can see that it rests nice and stably against the miter gauge fence so I can cut that notch easily. And once I have the notch cut, I'll glue on a pair of rectangular blanks and those will create the feet. Then I can go ahead and lay out the final curved shape and cut it at the bandsaw. So it all starts with cutting out the notch. And to do that, I've gone ahead and set up the saw. I've installed a 3 quarter inch dado blade and I've added a long auxiliary fence to my miter gauge. I've also added a stop block to the miter gauge fence. It's positioned to automatically register one side of the notch. To cut the notch, I make a first pass to establish one shoulder. Then I can flip the piece end for end and cut the opposite shoulder. Now I flip the piece up on edge and make one pass for the first shoulder and another pass for the other side. Finally, I'll set it on its last face and create the shoulders in one pass and then another. With all the shoulders established, I'll make a few cleanup passes on each side to clear out the waste. All right, I've got the notch all cut. And with that done, I can just go ahead and glue on the feet. And then I'll go ahead and lay out the final shape. I can cut those curves at the bandsaw and then finally sand away the saw mark. Well, Dave, the curves on that base give it a nice traditional look. They do, and these feet that get added to the bottom make the sawhorses nice and stable when they're in use. The next step is to make the top. Well, you'd think you'd make the post next, but there's a reason for making the top first. That's right, and the reason is that there's a tenon on the top of the post that fits into a mortise in the top. And I find that it's a little easier to make the mortise first and then fit the tenon to it. Right. You know, it's a pretty good sized mortise though, so it seems like it's going to take a little time and quite a bit of work to make it. And the real trick is cleaning up the sides and the bottom of the mortise so that it's straight, flat, and square. Well, all this starts over at the drill press to clean out most of the waste of this mortise. Well, Phil, I see you've taken care of most of the mortising. Well, you know, it doesn't really take that long to drill out most of the waste at the drill press. I use a Forstner bit to do the job, and I'm going to drill overlapping holes. But the one thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to back the bit out often to clear away the chips and to keep the bit from overheating. Once that's done, I took the top over to the bandsaw and cut a simple radius on each end. Well, Phil, you and I got a little bit of chisel work to do to get these mortises finished up. That's right. I hope you brought the sharp chisels. Yeah, there's a couple of pretty good ones. <laughs> okay, why don't you take care of that one, and I'll work on this one. That's good. Well, once the mortises are done, you can turn your attention to making the posts. The first thing to do is to cut a tenon on the end of the post. That tenon is going to fit in the mortises in the top that we just finished. You'll cut those tenons over at the table saw. Just make multiple passes across the dado blade.
Then it's on to making this through mortise for the stretchers to fit into. Now here again you can use a drill press and a chisel to clean it up. If you'd like to see a video on making a through mortise, go to our website, woodsmithshop.com. Now for the stretchers to fit into that mortise, you're going to have to cut a tenon on each end. Here again you'll do the same thing, make multiple passes across a dado blade at the table saw. And finally, we're going to cut a large open mortise like this that's going to fit over a notch in the base. There. Now the post is a pretty large piece and that would be an awkward cut at the table saw. So instead, I'm going to make the open mortise over at the bandsaw. Cutting the open mortise is done in three steps. You'll cut each side of the mortise and then remove the waste piece in the middle. Now you can see I've laid out the position of the mortise on the end of the post and that's going to help me to set up the fence and to make the cuts. To make the mortise, I cut straight down the side of the mortise. Stay just to the waist side of the line to save cleanup time later on. Cut until you reach the end line. Then pull the post back, flip it over, and make a second cut on the other side of the mortise. To remove the waste piece in the center, I'm going to need to move the fence out of the way. Now to cut out the waste piece, I'll start out just like the other cuts following in the kerf. But near the end, I'm going to make a sweeping curve cut to cut over to the opposite corner. A final cut from the other side removes most of the waste. To clean up the open mortise, I used a chisel to clean up the end, and then I used a file to fit the sides of the mortise to the notches in the base. Well, it looks like the legs are done. Why don't we dry fit all this and see how it goes together? Okay. And that starts by putting the legs onto the bases. There we go. And now we can add the stretcher in between. I'll start my end. There. Then I'll get this side in. Finally, we can put the top over the tenons on the end of the legs. There we go. Well, it looks like everything fits pretty well. Why don't I grab the glue? And I got the clamps, and we can put this thing together. Sounds good. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides. Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts. All fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.